Tomal, where is the Tomal? Eh? Let's see. And what happened to the case? No. I was not preaching court. Eh? I preached to the whole court and I had a lady judge. She she liked it. So she suspended my sentence. Huh? She suspended the sentence and the bell will be there for it. Oh. So, so suspend it. Oh, yeah. Oh. <coughs> All right. What is that book? Bhagavad Gita? Oh, you must have the book in your hand, everyone. <coughs> <coughs> Which copy? Ah, each of us back, copy now. back to God. Bhagavad Gita. Oh, Bhagavad Gita. That's all. So everyone, you must possess a copy. So read it. Where you stop last time? Second chapter. For one who has taken his birth, death is certain, and for one who is dead, birth is certain. Therefore, in the unavoidable discharge of your duty, you should not lament. Part part. Ah, part part. According to logicians. One has to take birth according to one's activities of life. After finishing one term of activities, one has to die to take birth for the next. In this way, the cycle of birth and death is revolving, one after the other, without liberation. This cycle of birth and death does not, however, support murder, slaughter, and war unnecessarily. But at the same time, violence and war are inevitable factors in human society for keeping law and order. The Battle of Kurukshetra being the will of the Supreme was an inevitable event, and to fight for the right cause is the duty of a Kshatriya. Why should he be afraid of or aggrieved at the death of his relatives, since he was discharging <coughs> his proper duty? He did not deserve to break the law, thereby becoming subjected to the reactions of sinful acts, of which he was so afraid. By ceasing from the discharge of his proper duty, he would not be able to stop the death of his relatives and would be degraded on account of his selection of the wrong path of action. All created beings are unmanifest in their beginnings, manifest in their interim state, and unmanifest again when they are annihilated. So what need is there for lamentation? 29. Hmm, this is another theory that voidism, that before our, this manifested life, there was void. And after this manifestation is over, still there will be void. Because according to voidism, everything is um, manifested originally void. So Krishna puts forward this argument that before this manifested form of life there was void. And after this manifested life there will be void, according to the void philosophy. Then where is the cause of lamentation? There is no cause of lamentation. It was void and it is going to be void. So where is the cause of lamentation? But actually, uh, <clears throat> that is, there, originally it was not void. That is, a, 
Bhagavad Gita and Vaishnav theory, just like Krishna said, that there was no such time when we did not exist. That means not there was there was no void, there was life. And in future also uh, there will be life. But accepting the theory of voidism, uh, this manifested body is combination of matter. Originally, void means the, <coughs> the ma- uh, matters, elementary matters, were not combined. Just like here is an open land. Now, if you combine some bricks and stones and wood, uh, it will appear a big skyscraper building. And if you dismantle, then again it becomes a vacant land. Similarly, uh, in the beginning it was vacant land, and after uh, finishing this body, it will be vacant land. Then where is the cause of lamentation? For argument's sake, Krishna is putting this reason. Yes, gone. <coughs> Some look on the soul as amazing, some describe him as amazing, and some hear of him as amazing, while others, even after hearing about him, cannot understand him at all. Yeah, about the soul, the general people, uh, it is amazing. Uh, it's still, in the uh, modern society, which is so proud, of scientific advancement. So far, soul is concerned. It is amazement. Nobody understands. It's still. Uh, <clears throat> and those who are hearing about the existence of soul, some of us also in amazement. Uh, it is a mysterious thing. And even after hearing, <clears throat> just like some student, there are many students, they are reading Bhagavad Gita, which confirms from the very beginning the existence of soul. But still, Bhagavad Gita, they are reading daily, they cannot understand what is soul. Amazement. <clears throat> So, about the soul and about God, the Supreme Soul, oh, this is the problem of the material world. Uh, Srimad Bhagavat says, Naishangamati Stavaduru Kramangrin, Prishatta. Anartha Pagamuja Dartya Niskin Chananang Niskin Chananang I've already said Mahi Asanga Paduru Jubi Sikam Niskin Chananang Navrini Tajavat. This is a very important verse. It says the Urukramangri. Urukramangri is the name of the Supreme Personality of God. <coughs> Uru, Uru means big, and Krama means activity. One whose activities are very great, uh, that he, who is, whose activities are very great. Uh, just try to understand. Now, now see, the big planet, biggest planet in the universe, uh, the sun glow, is floating in the corner of, his, of the sky. So whose activity is this? Who, who has caused this floating? This is called Urukrama, big activity. Not that because 
you have somehow or other balance some millions of dollars in the bank and you have become Rockefeller or Ford. Uh, that does not mean you are a very big worker. Here is the big work. <clears throat> millions of planets are floating in the air by his arrangement. He is called Urukrama. Big work. So, Bhagavad says, Naishang Matistavad Urukramangri. If anyone understands Urukramangri or the Supreme Lord, for him to understand the existence of soul is not very difficult. Just like one who has seen the sun glow, for him to understand what is sun sign is not very difficult. But one who is perpetually in the darkness, neither has seen the sun sign nor has seen the sun glow, for him what is light, what is sun, it is very difficult to understand. So Urukramangri, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, cannot be understood. Oh. And if it is understood, prishatya anartha apagamo jadartya. If one understands what is Urukramangri, God the Great, then immediately all his Ignorance, illusion is over. Anartha opasama. Anartha means just like we are unnecessarily entangled <coughs> in this material affairs. So if one understands the Urukramangi, God, then immediately his entanglement in this unnecessary activities of the material world become stopped. But how it is possible? Mahi asāṅga pādo rajo bhisīkam niskinchanānāṅga navrnita jāva. Mahi asāṅga niskinchanānāṅga. Niskinchan means a great personality who has become completely freed from all material consciousness. Uh, he is called Mahiyasa. <coughs> he is also great, the great soul. So unless one takes a shelter uh, of the lotus feet or the dust of the lotus feet of a great personality uh, who has no material uh, affection. Nobody can understand what is God. Naishāṅga matistāvad rukramāṅ dhīṁ priṣatta nārthopa gamo jadat. As soon as one understands the spirit soul and the supreme soul, that can be understood only when one is uh, taken shelter of a great personality freed from material contamination. This is the version of Srimad Bhagavad. Otherwise, it is amazement. To understand about soul is amazement. To understand about God is amazement. Uh, so Vedic injunction is therefore that if you are at all serious to understand tad vijñānam, that science, transcendental science, uh, tad vijñānam arthe sa guru me the Veda says, then you must find out a bona fide spiritual master, tad vijñānārtham, if you are seriously interested. Uh, <coughs> Go on. 30. O descendant of Bharata, he who dwells in the body is eternal, 
and can never be slain. Therefore, you did not grieve for any creature. Now, after putting forward all definitions and arguments uh, from different angles of vision of different philosophers, theses. Now Krishna concludes, my dear John, take it for certain that the soul within is eternal. So because we are in Krishna consciousness, even if we do not understand what is the constitutional position of the soul, yet because Krishna says we should accept it. This is called parampara, evang parampara pato, disciplic success. What does he say? Hmm. Yes, the same verse, repeat. He who dwells in the body, he began this instruction that deha dehi, the body and the proprietor of the body, or the resident of the body. Just like this hall, uh, and we are a resident of this hall. We are different. We are not this hall. This lecture room, we are within this lecture room. But that does not mean that we are, or I am, or you are this lecture room. Similarly, the soul dwells in this body. The body is changing, but the soul is not changing. That was the beginning of conversation with Arjun after he is surrendering unto Krishna as disciple. And again he concludes in that way, that this, uh, take it from me, because you have accepted me as your spiritual master. This is the significance. If you accept somebody as spiritual master, you have to accept whatever he says. Otherwise there is no need. But if you cannot understand, you can uh, inquire sincerely, that is not bad, but you have to accept. <coughs> so, Krishna says, conclusion, what is that? That within this body, uh, what is that? He who dwells in the body is eternal. Uh, he who dwells within this body is eternal. Uh, is that? Never be slain. And can never be slain. Because it is already described that soul cannot be burned, soul cannot be moistened, soul cannot be dried up, soul cannot be killed, soul cannot be cut into pieces. So many things. Just opposite of matter. Any material thing you take, even stone, iron, it can be burned, it can be cut into pieces, it can dry up, uh, so many things, all applicable to the matter. But so far the spirit soul is concerned, it is just the opposite. Oh. Therefore, the conclusion is there, na hannate hannamane sarire, even after this body is annihilated, the soul remains eternal. Uh, he, just like if somebody comes and drives us out of this room, that does not mean that I am finished. I shall go and take shelter of another room. Similarly, when the soul when the body is killed or annihilated by nature or by force, the soul takes shelter of another body. That is the conclusion. Hmm. Wow. Thirty-one. Considering your specific duty as a kachatriya, 
you should know that there is no better engagement for you than fighting on religious principles. And so there is no need for hesitation. So, yeah, fighting is a matter of duty. That is a Kshatriya spirit. Fighting is not killing, because people have no idea what is the soul. Therefore, they think that stopping war will uh, help us a peaceful condition of the society. Oh, there are so many troubles. So long this body is there, a war is one of the items. Uh, even war is stopped. There is no question that people will live forever. No. That is not the law of nature. Dukkhālāma sāsata. This life, the problem is how to stop our contact with this material body. That is the problem. Uh, not that, that these uh, general people, they are thinking, if war, there is no war, then you shall be very happy. Uh, how you will stop your war with Maya? Maya has declared war with you, or you have declared war with Maya. Devidji se kunamayi mama maya durattaya. The Maya, the material nature is enforcing. Why you are closing this door? Oh, because it is very cold outside. And who is forcing? Immediately there will be cold, immediately there will be fog, immediately there will be excessive heat, immediately there may be uh, earthquake. How you can stop it? Uh, so uh, they simply think, just like an uh, innocent child, uh, they are concerned with the immediate problem. But a sane man is concerned uh, with the ultimate problem. So our ultimate problem is not this war. The ultimate problem is repetition of birth and death. That is ultimate problem. How to stop this? That is the problem. So Krishna says that uh, this is useless lamentation, that you do not wish, uh, wish to fight. Uh, it is a concluded fact that even your grandfather or relatives die, uh, they will continue as so. You have to execute your duty. Uh, you cannot deviate from your duty. Wow. Mm. O Partha, happy are the Kachatriyas to whom such fighting opportunities come unsought, opening for them the doors of the heavenly planets. Thirty-three. Now, why the Kachatriyas? It is said in the Shastra, if a Kachatriya dies in the fight, then he is uh, promoted to the heavenly kingdom to take birth because he is fighting for the right cause. So he is promoted. <clears throat> As in this world also, if you fight for some right cause, <clears throat> you are rewarded. <clears throat> Even after your death, your memory is uh, commemorated. Uh, just like in your country, so many brave soldiers, leaders, they have died. But you have honored them by keeping their statues because they fought and died for right cause, whatever we think, right or wrong. So the Kshatriyas, this is the uh, Vedic injunction, who dies for the right cause, he is promoted to the heavenly planet. Now Krishna says, now it is a great opportunity for you. Suppose either you or your grandfather, the opposite party, die in this fight. So your promotion to heavenly planet is sure. 
And if you gain, then you, you get the kingdom. Both ways, it is profitable for you. Go on. If, however, you do not fight this religious war, then you will certainly incur sin for neglecting your duties and thus lose your reputation as a fighter. And on the other hand, if you don't fight, then you are known as a great warrior, a great soldier. If you go away, uh, people will say against your reputation, Oh, Arjun has become a coward. He has fled away from the fight. So it is better to die than to have bad reputation. That is another argument. Yes. Thirty-four. People will always speak of your infamy, and for one who has been dishonored, for one who has been honored, dishonor is worse than death. Now you are so much honored as Arjun, the great fighter, Dhananjaya. And if you leave, you go away from this fighting and leave, and people will say, Oh, Arjuna has become coward. He did not fight. Then what is the use of your living in such a way? Better die. Fight and die. That is good for you. Yes. The great generals have highly esteemed your name and fame will think that you have left the battlefield out of fear only, and thus they will consider you a coward. Thirty-six. Your enemies will be... A Kshatriya, uh, it is the custom of the Kshatriya, the, if they are wounded on the back side, he is considered a coward. But if he is wounded on the chest, uh, he is accepted as real Kshatriya. That means he has fought face to face. That is the injunction of military art in Vedic injunction. Uh. Your enemies will describe you in many unkind words and scorn your ability. What could be more painful for you? Hmm. 37. O oh, son of Kunti, either you will be killed on the battlefield and attain the heavenly planets, or you will conquer and enjoy the earthly kingdom. Therefore, get up and fight with determination. 38. Do thou fight for the sake of fighting, without considering happiness or distress, loss or gain. Now this is duty. One has to execute duty without any consideration of loss and gain. That is duty, uh, observing duty. Let's see. Uh, you are Kshatriya, there is necessity of this fighting. So you should not consider whether you are gaining or losing. It is your duty to fight. Go on. And by, and by so doing, you shall never incur sin. Therefore, yes. If you execute your duty uh, nicely, there is no question of sin. Uh, to uh, execute duty is fight. Hmm. Lord Krishna now directly says that Arjuna should fight for the sake of fighting, because Krishna desires the battle. There is no consideration of happiness or distress, profit or gain. This is Krishna consciousness. Krishna says, actually this happened. Uh, this is the Krishna consciousness. One should not think of personal loss or gain. Krishna desires it. So I have to. There is no personal consideration. That is real Krishna consciousness. Uh, Krishna, you are asking me to do this. Uh, I do not like to do this. Uh, you give, give me some other work. Uh, that is not Krishna consciousness. Uh, there is no, I mean, yes or no. As Krishna says, what Krishna says? Krishna says, the essence of Bhagavad Gita, that a, a person who preaches this sublime message of Bhagavad Gita, he is my dear most friend in the human society. This is the open order of Krishna. Lord Chaitanya says, Amar Agnaya Guru Hayya Taro Sarbodhis. 
যারে দেখো তারে কহ কৃষ্ণ অপদেশ টেক মাই অর্ডার অ্যান্ড ইউ বিকাম এ স্পিরিচুয়াল মাস্ট হাও সিম্পলি স্পিক কৃষ্ণ কনসিয়াসনেস দ্যাটস সিম্পলি স্পিক অন কৃষ্ণাস মেসেজ কৃষ্ণ কথা দের আর টু কাইন্ডস অফ কৃষ্ণ কথাস ওয়ান ইজ দি ভগবদ গীতা এন্ড দি আদার ইজ শ্রীমদ ভাগ সো দিস ইজ এ প্রপাগেশন অফ কৃষ্ণ কনসিয়াসনেস উই হ্যাভ টু অ্যাভয়েড বাই দি সুপিরিয়র অর্ডার্স উইদাউট কনসিডারেশন অফ আওয়ার পার্সোনাল গেইন অর লং this is krishna consciousness uh, there is no question of personal gain and loss go on dear victory of the peace in the activities of krishna consciousness mm-hmm. that everything should be performed for the sake of krishna is transcendental consciousness so there is no reaction from material activity mm-hmm. and if you do that then there is no reaction জ্ঞানার্থ কর্ম নু লোক অ্যান্ড ইফ ইউ ডু অন ইয়র অ্যাকাউন্ট দেয়ার ইজ বি রিয়াকশন আই দ্যার ইউ ডু গুড ওয়ার্ক অর ব্যাড ওয়ার্ক দেয়ার উইল বি রিয়াকশন ইফ ইউ ডু গুড ওয়ার্ক ইউল গুড গেট গুড রেজাল্ট অ্যান্ড ইফ ইউ ডু ব্যাড ওয়ার্ক ইউল গেট ব্যাড রেজাল্ট দ্যাটস অল লাইফ বাট উইদ ইন দিস মেটিরিয়াল ওয়ার্ল্ড সাপোজ ইফ ইউ ডু পায়াস অ্যাক্টিভিটিস So, what is the result of pious activities? According to Shastra, the effect of pious activity uh, is that you can get uh, uh, birth in a very respectable aristocratic family. Uh, you can get a uh, very nice, uh, wealthy position. Uh, you can become very beautiful. and you can become very learned these are the four principles of pious activities according to shastra and if you do just the opposite you take your birth in abominable family or in lower degraded animal species of life no education no beauty no knowledge there are so many things so if you have to believe shastra these are the effects of bad and good work now <clears throat> uh, for a person who is in con- krishna consciousness he is not concerned with aristocratic family or abominable family he wants to stop birth the suppose one gets birth in aristocratic family or very nice family what is again the there you have to uh, leave 10 months within the womb of your mother in suffocated condition either you take your birth in aristocratic family or in abominable family either in human mother's womb or animal mother's womb that does not make any difference so krishna conscious person is neither interested in pious activities or impious activities but one who is in krishna consciousness all are activities all activities are pious transcendent uh, automatically he hasn't got to uh, try separately just shasti bhakti bhagavat akinchana any one take for example non violence non violence is good quality now here you see krishna and arjun arjun is a devotee of krishna automatically he is trying to be non violent ah, why should i fight this is krishna consciousness because he is devotee of krishna krishna non violence is already his quality ah. people are starting vegetarian society to become vegetarian very uh, i mean uplifted society but uh, the persons who are in krishna conscious they are already vegetarian that means the people in the ordinary status 
They are trying to acquire some good qualities, but in Krishna conscious person you will find all the good qualities automatically. That is the difference. So Krishna consciousness, Krishna conscious person is not interested that this is a good work or this is bad work. He is interested with Krishna because his activities in Krishna consciousness is all transcendent, better than good. Shuddha Sattva, pure goodness. In the material world, the goodness, the quality of goodness is sometimes tinged with passion and ignorance. But in pure goodness, which is Krishna consciousness, there is no tinge of passion or ignorance. And automatically everything is good. Yes? When he wants to ask for his sense gratification, either in goodness or in passion, hmm. is liable to the reaction, good yes. or bad. Hmm. That is explained, yes. Anyone who has completely surrendered himself to the activities of Krishna consciousness is no longer obliged to anyone, nor is he indebted to anyone, as we are in the ordinary course of activities. It said, quote, Anyone who has completely surrendered unto Krishna, Mukunda, giving up all other duties, is no longer a debtor, nor is he obliged to anyone, not the demigods, nor the sages, nor the people in general, nor kinsmen, nor humanity, nor forefathers. That is the indirect hint given by Krishna to Arjuna in this verse, and the matter will be more clearly explained in the following verses. Hmm, that's all. So. <clears throat> there is a verse in the Srimad Bhagavatam, Devar Sibhuta Tuninang Pitrinang, Devar Sibhuta Tuninang Pitrinang, Nayang Rini Na Kinkara Rajan. Sarvatmanaja saranam saranam gato mukundam parihattu kartum. The, the meaning of this verse is that anyone who is born in the human society, civilized society, uh, he is indebted immediately, just the child is born in a family. So according to Vedic injunction, he immediately becomes indebted to so many items. What is that? He becomes indebted immediately to the uh, different demigods, uh, sun, moon, uh, Indra, Chandra, so many. Uh, because we are re receiving light from the sun, from the moon, so you are indebted. Uh, people do not care for it because they have no knowledge. Therefore, in the Vedas, the sacrifice is recommended to perform uh, respective um, duties to become discharged from the indebtedness. So you, have, you are indebted to the demigod, uh, indebted to the sages, just like Vasudev. Vasudev, he has given us so many Vedic literatures. So we are taking advantage. So Deva, Rishi, Bhuta, ordinary living entities, uh, even cats and dogs. Uh, but we, instead of being indebted, we uh, do something else. Just like you are drinking milk. So we are indebted to the cows. So instead of repaying the indebtedness, we are killing them. So in this way, we are complicated in so many ways. Devursi bhūta ninang pitrinang. Pitrinang means in the family in which you are born. You are indebted because you are inheriting property, you are inheriting uh, the mother's affection, father's affection. So are you indebted? People should consider that is civilization. So, but uh, anyone who has taken shelter of Mukunda, Mukunda is Krishna, uh, he has no more any indebtedness. He becomes free. Uh, 
all indebtedness, a charge is taken by Krishna and he will uh, square up the account. Uh, there is no doubt about it. He says that. Aṅkāṁ sarvapāpi bhamokkaśya. Uh, yes. All right. So any question? Yeah. I understand that it's an offense to wear red or blue in the Krishna temple. Why is this true? What is that? She says it is an offense even to a red or, or blue in the temple. Blue? Red or blue. She wants to know why this is. I don't know. Why, why is it an offense to wear red or blue clothing? Oh, <laughs> hmm. because it is red and blue. Is that online? Is the temple red and blue? Huh? You see, you have to accept the Vedic injunction as it is. Uh, there is some meaning. Huh? which may not be explained immediately, but because it is so enjoined, we have to accept it. Just like uh, the corn cell, the corn cell is the bone of an animal. Now, in the Vedas it is said that if you touch the bone of an animal or human being, you have to take bath immediately to purify yourself. Now this corn cell is also born of an animal. Now it is kept in the deity's room. Now if you say, oh, the bone of an animal is impure, how it is that? It is kept in the deity's room. So actuality is being done. Why it is being done? Because it is injunction of the Vedas. Similarly, all such injunctions we have to accept, but there is meaning. Uh, there is meaning, and that may not be understood immediately, that doesn't matter. So, if instead of a red uh, garment, if you take this saffron, what is harm to you? So you should accept the Indians. Because in Arjuna's own heart, he knows that he's being kind or that he's in confusion because of his kindness. Does this make a difference, the, the opinion that one's uh, fellow Kshatriya will have of him? Arjun was reputed as a great warrior. So he's, he should become, uh, remain a great warrior. Uh, a warrior's business is not to uh, uh, stop fighting on the plea of becoming kind. Uh, if you have gone to the war field and if you uh, practice non-violence there, this is useless. Why should you go? Uh, there is a Bengali proverb that naste uh, bose ghumtatam, that uh, in a, India, the girls, they cover their head. That is the system of married girls, uh, shyness. So, it is said that one girl is on the stage uh, for dancing. Now, while she is to dance, 
She is covering the head. What is the use of covering the head? You have come to dance, you dance. Similarly, in the war field, you have gone there to fight. Uh, what is the question of becoming non-violent? So, so uh, things should be done uh, according to the time and atmosphere. In the war field, there is no question of non-violence. That is, the war is arranged for committing violence. Uh, where is the question of preaching their non-violence? Renounce what? To, re, to renounce his place as a warrior and to, be, to go out in the, in the woods and be a mendicant or whatever you want to do. Who said? Arjuna. So that is his cowardice. That is being condemned by Krishna. That it is not your business to give up uh, fighting and go away from the war field and go to the forest for meditation. It is not your business. How did, how did that work differ from other words? And, uh, it is sometimes knife is pierced in your body by a surgeon. And in another occasion, Another man pierces a knife to stab you. Do you think both knife piercing is the same? No. Similarly. But a, but a man who charges at you on a horse. Eh? But a man who charges at you on a horse with a, with a lance or something, you know, in, in a war, does. Like, now, first of all, try to understand this that uh, piercing the knife in the body is not always bad. Similarly, war or fighting is not always bad, provided it is done for right cause. That should be understood. So when the director is Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead himself is directing. So there is no cause are ah, stopping. He has his plan, he knows. Uh, we cannot judge. So he is the Supreme. So that war is uh, necessary because it is uh, desired by the Supreme Lord. to maintain the laws of the world, as to maintain the laws and order of a state, there is violence department, the police department, the military department. Why? The government can stop it. Oh, this is unnecessary expenditure. No. There is necessity for maintenance of the state. Similarly, uh, war is sometimes necessary for maintenance of the order of the world. But people have misused, that is a different thing. But here, in this battlefield of Kurukshetra, there is no question of misuse, because it is under the direction of the Supreme Personality of God. There is no such question of misusing. 
war is necessary, but that does not mean it should be misused. There are so many instances. Just like sex life is necessary for uh, generating, for progeny, but that is being misused for sex gratification. That is another thing. In Bhagavad Gita, it is said the sex life uh, in religious principle. And the religious principle means, according to Vedic injunction, uh, putra te kriyate bharja, putra pinna prayajanam. There is necessity of a bona fide son in the family. And to beget a bona fide son, there is necessity of accepting why. So, uh, acceptance of such why and uh, sex life in that connection is not abominable. But to uh, keep some friend and enjoy sex life for sense gratification, that is abominable. But the function is the same. Somebody may say, why? This is also sex life, that is also sex life. But there is much difference. Similarly, apparently a thing may appear to be the same, but it has got great significance. That is to be judged by higher authorities. That higher authorities, supreme authority is there, Krishna Himself. There are um, six, six things which is anger, lust, lust, pride, and envy. What are the other two? I've, I've heard. Illusion. And enviousness. Calm, mm-hmm. crow, lust. Lust, anger, lust is also. Calm, mm-hmm. crow, lobe, moho, masajya, and modo. <coughs> modo means illusion. <coughs> masajya. First thing is calm, lust. Second, crow, anger. Uh, third, uh, greediness. Calm, crow, low, moho, illusion. Modo, madness. Uh, calm, crow, low, moho, modo, massa, enviousness. These are six. Hmm. So, anything more? What is meant by madness? Hmm? What is meant by madness? They say, don't you see all these people of the world, they're mad? <laughs> uh, what they are doing? The whole day the cars going this side, that side, what is the aim of life? They're mad. Simply uh, wasting petroleum, that's all. <laughs> what they are doing? Huh? Suppose a cat and dog goes this side and that side, go, 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 and he goes <laughs> some motor car. What is the difference? There is no difference. Because the aim of the life is the same. Therefore, they are mad. Uh, that is explained. Nunam pramatta kurute vikarma jadindriya prita yaprinoti. Nunam pramatta. Pramatta means mad. Prakishta rupena matta. Sufficiently mad. Uh, and why? Kurute vikarma. They are acting which they should not act. 
They're acting in a way in which they should not have done. So what is the aim of their acting? Indra Prita, simply for sense gratification, that's all. So, Vishabde says, Nasadhu manne, oh, this is not good. Nasadhu manne. Jato atmano yam asanna pi klesa de asa de ha. These madmen do not know that this is the cause of getting this miserable material body. The sufferings of humanity is due to this material body. And the cause is bikarma, acting for sense gratification. So this life is meant for acting for liberation, but they are acting for sense gratification, therefore they are mad. They do not know the aim of life. Life after life they are working. The cat's life, the dog's life, the horse's life, the man's life, or even demigod's life, so simply for sense gratification. And so long he will continue these activities of sense gratification, he will have to accept uh, some sort of material body, in the eight million four hundred thousands of species, either as demigod or as dog. So this is going on. The Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says, Eirupe Brahmanda Vamite Kono Bhagavan Ji. They are uh, encircling uh, or circumambulating in this cycle of birth and death out of many, many millions of such persons, if one is fortunate, he comes in contact with uh, Krishna's representative and by which he becomes Krishna conscious and his life becomes sublime. So this is madness, simply for sense gratification. They have no other business. This is madness. What do you think? This is not madness? See it every day. Huh? So you see it every day. Yes. And there is no difficulty to find out a madman. Any man you find out is a madman. And that is medical version also. That is medical version. Uh, in, in, a, in, in India there was a case, a man was murdered and the criminal lawyer pleaded that he was in madness. So this, the expert, uh, no, the no, medical practitioner was invited and uh, he was asked to examine whether this man is in madness. So he said that so far my experience goes, uh, I have studied uh, every man is a mad man more or less. So every man in the material concept of life is a madman. Because he does not know his identification. Therefore he is a madman. Pishachi paile jana motichana jana just as like a ghostly haunted man, if father is standing before him and he is calling the father by illness because he is ghostly haunted. Similarly, a, a living entity who is entrapped by this material energy, illusion, he is a madman. And the whole treatment is to get out of this disease of madness misidentification, misconception of life. So it is not difficult to find out a madman. Any man is a madman. Yes? Prabhupada, what is the position of Lord Shiva as a 
Lord Shiva is a demigod, but he is uh, higher than all other demigods. He is higher than Lord Brahma, but he is not the Supreme Lord. Just like there are different gradations, that is not difficult to understand. In, in society also, there are different gradations. Similarly, the living entities, uh, there are different gradations. So, um, all the living entities, they are, some of them are situated in higher planets, some of them are situated in lower planets, some of them are situated in uh, high-grade life, low-grade life. So, um, the demigods are also, they are living entities, but uh, they are enjoying better standard of life due to their uh, acts of piety. But Lord Shiva is not amongst the living entities. He is uh, above the living entities. But he is counted as one of the demigods. But his position is better than Lord Brahma. Even. Brahma is to be the highest uh, living entity within the universe, and <coughs> Lord Shiva's position is higher than Lord Brahma. Mm. Does Lord Shiva also have a consort and, and, and like a hmm? Does Lord Shiva have a, a wife like a, a consort? Yes. Parvati. Uh, Parvati. Yes. Sati. Everyone has got wife. Yes. Shakti. Yes, everyone is devotee. Only the madman, they are not devotee. Any sane man is devotee. Sanity means become devotee. That is sanity. And one who is not devotee is insane. Insanity. So how you can expect the Lord devotee is not devotee? Uh, yeah, Lord Shiva is not devotee. He is not insane. We are any. The material, uh, the ordinary living entities in the lower grades of life, they are all insane. Hmm. What is that? Yes. Yes, Durga is the material energy. So Lord Shiva is directly connected with the material energy. Therefore, he is less than Lord Vishnu. Vishnu is not directly. Uh, related with the material energy. Uh, the example is given in the Brahma Sanghita, just like meal, as soon as in connect, touch with something sour, it becomes jugurt. The jugurt is nothing but milk, but in connection with some sour material, it is jugurt. So jugurt is milk, but it is not milk also. Uh, your child requires milk, you cannot give sugar. Nobody can argue, oh, sugar is milk preparation, why not give? No, it will be not beneficial for him. Uh. So similarly, if you want release from this material world, you have to take to Vishnu, no other demigod. If you want strength, then you have to drink milk, not jugar. Jugar, at times you can eat uh, for some taste or some particular purpose. The milk is general drinking. Just take the statistics, how many bottles of milk are sold in the store and how many bottles of jugar is sold. Uh, the jugar and milk is the same thing. Why they demand milk, not the sugar? Is that right? Yes. But nobody can put argument, oh, why do you take uh, milk? Take the sugar. Uh, no. Yes. Is it 
Is it all right that Lord Shiva's picture is in the new calendar that's come up? Well, Lord Shiva is devotee, why not? Hare Krishna, chant Hare Krishna. So your case is dismissed? Oh, that money is returned? 